Everyone loves to receive a pay raise. But once you get it, how do you know if your purchasing power really has improved? Welcome to Economics Made Simple. Please remember to like this video and click that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. The question speaks to an important economic distinction, the difference between nominal wages and real wages. To help us make the distinction, we've brought in a special guest. Hello again. The difference between real and nominal wages is actually quite simple once you break it down. At first glance, the matter of wage growth seems pretty straightforward. If your pay rises from $20 to $21 per hour in a year, it's gone up 5%. And that would be good news. But just how good a piece of news it is can depend on whether prices for goods and services are rising along with that boost in your paycheck. What we're talking about are real wages, the amount of money someone really is earning when their wages account for inflation. So wait, to make sure we're clear, real wages are adjusted for inflation, but nominal wages are not, right? Exactly. Nominal wages aren't adjusted for changes in price pressures. They represent the amount of money you're being paid in dollars with no adjustments. If you're paid $20 per hour, then your nominal wage is $20 per hour. Easy enough. Okay, I understand what nominal wages are now. But what about real wages? Imagine you earn $20 per hour for a year, and during that time, the cost of things you buy goes up by 5%. Even if your pay rate rises to $21 per hour, you haven't really gained any buying power due to inflation. The way the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates the impact of inflation on wages is a little more technical. Fortunately, the agency produces a real earnings news release each month that includes both the one month and 12 month percentage changes in both nominal and real earnings. When I read the report, what sort of things would I be looking for? Let's say the report shows that both nominal and real hourly earnings increased over the past year. That may suggest the purchasing power of Americans has improved. But if the report shows nominal wages increasing while real wages are declining, it could point to a loss in purchasing power despite the fact those nominal wages are rising. It's also important on a much larger scale. Economists and policymakers rely on this information to better understand the underlying health of the economy. Once again, you've made it oh so simple. Thanks for the explanation. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, that's all for today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and watch for more Economics Made Simple.